Hi Design Thinkers, we are going to be covering some advanced tips and tricks around auto layouts inside Figma. We're going to be covering fixed hug and fill. So if that interests you, then hey, let's jump into the video. All right, so we're inside of Figma. We're about to understand a little bit more about how fix and hug and fill work. I'm going to give you a bigger overview on understanding just a general gist. So if we're designing, let's say a application screen, it could be for a mobile. We need to understand that there is two points of control. We could control from the outside where the frame will dictate the content within. Because we're using auto layout, we're telling the content inside to adjust and adapt based on a origin point. This one is adjusting and adapting based on the outside. So if the outside stretches and gets larger, then the inside will also adapt. And this one is when it works from the inside out. So this is when we have here is an inside text element. And let's just throw in some extra text. You can, as you can see the text as it pushes content down. So it controls for that. But if I was to expand here, that inside element pushes out the outside elements and the outside elements try to fill in the space. So you need either an inside or outside, and then we can get in some advanced kind of combination of both, understanding how we can leverage it in different places. All right, so let's have a quick look. We're gonna actually look at what happens when we make a fixed frame and then inside use actually fill content. Let's duplicate this guy. I'm gonna zoom right in here. And what I have is a fixed outer frame. The content inside of this frame doesn't respond. This is an auto layout. At the moment, this is fixed and this is also fixed. And this frame is also fixed. This is width ways and as I continue to drag it out, it can basically dictate the content inside. So let's start by selecting two of the blocks inside of this frame. We're going to use a fill. And what it does is it evenly fills both these two blocks inside this frame. And by doing so, now we have an actual responsive frame that on the width will respond to the actual frame. And this is control from the outside. If I wanted to look at a piece of content that I controlled from the inside, because I'm using fill here, I would need to switch this around. Let's instead use hug. And now that I'm hugging the content, instead of having the content fill the container, I can then turn around and tell one of these elements or both of these elements to actually have the fixed. Or in some cases, if I tell this content to hug, the content inside it will be the fixed control. So let's go fixed. And now if I actually stretch that out, it forces the other frame, the other frames to adapt. Basically, that's how we control for our origin point. And overall, that's how we control for having and using the fixed hug and fill variants. For this one, we got two frames. I got the fixed, I've already showed you how we can use this as the origin point for this one. We have the outside, which is also the kind of origin point for that one. We control it both ways. The question I like to ask myself is, do I have a fixed width to any particular point of content? So for this one, I've got text. And when we're designing, let's say a card where we have some text blocks, 
there's usually a minimum that we want it to sit at. So I would usually make sure it is either fixed by width and then I make it hug by height. What we have here, I have the outside frame. The outside frame hugs the content inside the frame. And as we hover over this, you'll see the little arrows that are up on the screen. And then what I can do is I can say hug the content inside and this will hug the content inside. I can then go to the content, which is this text block. I can tell the text block to have the horizontal, which is the width fixed, but hug on the height. So if I basically continue to paste in, it will always hug the content and it'll push the box outwards. And that's basically how we can control the content of the entire frame and this is when we start to think about other types of content and how other types of content will respond to the container now we understand that as i continue to push this down i have this frame and let's just say this frames an image so if this frames an image i might want to just fill this container one problem is if I keep pasting it through, my image might not be that big. So there is an, a maximum image height we would have. And a way that we can control for that, instead of us instantly saying, okay, we have this whole image and we want this image to fill, of course we want it to fill, but what we can do is either put this actual frame inside a secondary frame and remove those pieces of any sort of padding and this frame can be the frame that will actually be the fixed height be careful when using fixed height but basically we can say that ultimately in the end this will be the maximum amount of text that can go inside it but as soon as we make this the fixed height if I was to take away the text outside of here, you'll notice that the text will still hug the container, but this is the now the actual container controller or the height. Until such point, the other box becomes bigger. So this will be the minimum height, and this will be the height that it would go to as it continues to expand so this can also define what it would eventually be like a maximum height so now we understand basically using two auto layout frames we understand that if we hug content and the content then expands to be more than the largest object so this would be the largest in height then this will be the one that is pushing the content container on the outside. This is controlling from the inside out. If we control and take this example on the inside inwards, then what we need to know is exactly the content that's inside because the content inside needs to respond to the content outside. So let me fill this container and take away control of the actual content. I'm gonna drag this up, I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna make sure that everything fills the frame that it's actually inside of. And now that everything fills the frame, this frame will be completely responsive. The content inside is responding and what I'm going to just quickly do is just make sure that content has the ability to fix on the top. There we go. So now this content completely responds to the container. And when we make it responsive from the outside in, we need to know that sometimes it will cut content out. 
And that may be what you want. And if that is what you want and you are creating, for example, a prototype, all you need to make sure is to give it the ability to scroll inside. And that would be a nice, easy way to control or control it from outside. H is a good use case of picking it if you're controlling from outside in or inside out. If you need to have the frame dictate the scale and you want to create limits to the content you put inside your auto layouts, outside in is a really responsive, very flexible way of doing it. But when you're controlling from the inside out, you need to know which elements are controlling for the height and which elements are controlling for the width. And that's where you want to also make sure that you break down your designs into smaller chunks. Here's a couple of extra adding on tips and tricks around some things we can do with using some auto layouts frames. The great thing about an auto layout frame is that we can actually hide and show elements. If we allow ourselves to use components, we can actually use the actual hide and show elements to control for the way that we have this grid. I'm at the moment hiding and showing this single slot. And when I hide that slot, it makes the other slot fill the container. If we wanted to create a like a component that allowed us different options on having either two columns or one column, we could easily use this method to add in additional columns or additional elements that will fill that container. We can also look at the ability to adjust and make fixed content. And this is where I think things come into being a little more interesting. And this is where we use a little bit of positioning and understanding of how we can position elements as well as use our fixed and fill container. So here's a fixed container and I have two elements inside. And as I'm hiding one, which is technically here, I'll just change the color of this one. And I'll change the color of this one. As I hide one, the red moves off to the side. And that's because I put into my fill frame, I've told it that it is aligned to the left. And being aligned to the left means that when a asset in the auto layout stack disappears, it will move all other assets to the left. And because these are fixed, they will be fixed as a size and they will move to the left when there is no when and reach the padding point of that left. So you can use this to create switches. You could use this to create a very a varying stack. For example, down the bottom here, let's just say you had some buttons and you wanted those buttons off to the left. And sometimes you might show, you know, four buttons, but sometimes you might want to only show two, three, or five. So you have your stack, the stack will be stacking auto layout. And then you can make sure that is the way that it's stacking from the parent. So there's that field container. That container is fixed on either side. And I told it to use it like a horizontal fill. It is filling from left to right. And I will quickly just give this a nice color adjustment just so we can see what happens when we add more and less elements to the stack. So as I hide the elements, they disappear and they will always move to the left. And if I was to add elements, they will move to the right and they would always be pulling to the left. Now, because this is a fixed frame, this frame dictates the actual 
size or the width of this container. But if I wanted to now have it expand and hold and hug that content, then what do we need to do? We need to use hug so that we hug that content. And when I when you notice that I, as soon as I hug that content, it expanded outwards. And that's when we look into some more advanced elements around anchoring, which I'll be covering in a separate video. Overall, that is how we can create some auto layouts. We can turn things on and off. We can understand how the actual hugging, either from your height to your width, will create different levels of control. And we understand also that we can control from the outside in or the inside out. And controlling from the inside out is dictated from a element's width and an element's height. And they could be the same element or they can be two different elements. I hope this whole tips and tricks has been helpful for you. Please subscribe and leave some comments. I'm always here to help and I look forward to doing more of these videos to help all your designers out understand how to build your own advanced design systems using auto layouts. Thank you again. Bye.